Hi everyone, Rachel from North Brisbane Psychologists. I wanted to talk about boundaries and the relationship between boundaries and emotions, specifically um, the emotions of resentment and exhaustion. Uh, and guilt and shame can get thrown in there as well. So a lot of clients flag with me and I think with my colleagues that they'd like to have better boundaries or that they'd like to discuss boundaries in their session with their psychologist and that, that this is something that they struggle with. So let me talk about what I think a boundary is. I go with Brene Brown's definition of boundaries most of the time, which is a boundary is simply me knowing what is okay by me and what is not okay by me. Now that's a very simple definition, right? Knowing what's okay and what's not okay for me. Something, you know, that that is my boundary, my okay, not okay, you know, might not apply to somebody else. So this is very individual work. And this will change over time, you know, because our boundaries will need to shift in accordance with our physical, mental, emotional capacities which change over time and so this is where it can be really tricky also how we set boundaries or don't set boundaries will be heavily influenced by our upbringing and what we were taught growing up both in our family of origin as well as the culture at large um, and so and it can also be affected by things like you know whether we're male or female um, the color of our skin whether we fit into a minority group or not this, these kinds of uh, characteristics of our individuality might affect how good we are or not good we are at setting boundaries. So one of the clues to not having appropriate boundaries um, for yourself, one of the clues, actually two major clues I'll tell you about, are resentment and exhaustion. Now, exhaustion may not always mean your boundaries are unclear, although very often it will. Sometimes you can just be physically exhausted because you've pushed yourself too far. So you haven't known your own limits and known when you needed to stop. Sometimes you may have no choice. Exhaustion can be recovered from like anything. Um, but sometimes we're mentally or emotionally exhausted. And this is a clue that we have gone beyond our limits, that we've done things We've said yes when deep down we meant no. And I think that this is actually um, related to resentment, this idea of a superficial yes and a deep no. Many of us have been taught to say yes and do what we're told and be good and be nice. And so we end up saying yes to things and doing things and you know, even not even being asked sometimes by others, but just believing that we have to and we should and we're obliged and we have a duty to look after others, do things for others, uh, say yes to requests. Um, when deep down in our heart of hearts, we don't want to. We don't want to because we feel so stretched already and we don't have the energy and time. Or we don't want to because it doesn't feel like the right thing to do. It's uncomfortable. So boundaries can be about um, our involvement in a situation. So knowing how much to be involved, how much to pull back. Boundaries can be around our time and our energy, knowing how much time and energy to give something or someone versus pulling back. Uh, and boundaries can be about simply saying no when we're asked to do things or finding a way to, um, you know, uh, say no basically and, and, and put the responsibility um, somewhere else rather than taking it all on ourselves. One of the therapies we do at North Brisbane Psychologists is schema therapy and one of the schemas, schemas are like unconscious operating systems or beliefs and one of them is called the self-sacrificing schema and that means we sacrifice our own deeper feelings and needs in order to keep the peace, look after others, make other people happy. Um, when we feel resentment and sometimes exhaustion, this is a clue that we have been um, hooked into our self-sacrificing schema, that that has been activated and we are sacrificing our own needs and feelings. 
this is deep, deep work because it's not as easy as, as just saying no to everybody. We know that this is not an easy thing to overcome or a habit to break. This is hard work for a lot of people. Psychologists get that. We really get that. It's not as easy as saying, well, just don't do it and just say no. These old patterns and old habits die hard. We, we get that. They go right back to childhood often. Sometimes they're linked with our natural temperament to be quite agreeable and easygoing. So there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, and this is the work of therapy for a lot of people <clears throat> is learning to bypass their self-sacrificing schema. Um, you know, uh, let go of their resentment and find ways to not keep building up, uh, reinforcing their resentments. So there's a couple of things that I want to leave you with that you could do um, in order to avoid accumulating more resentment, more guilt and shame, more exhaustion from having poor boundaries. I think it's really helpful to have a mantra when you're trying to have better boundaries because the old schema, the old tendency to want to please everybody <clears throat> and sacrifice your own needs, this is very powerful. We know how powerful this is if we've lived with it. So we might have a mantra that's something like, um, I'm choosing to be uncomfortable rather than resentful because it can be very uncomfortable to say no to somebody, to push back, to have a bit of healthy conflict in order to avoid resentment, sometimes we need some healthy conflict. We need to be assertive. We need to say no. That's uncomfortable for a lot of people. But personally, I'm starting to choose being uncomfortable over being resentful. Sitting with that, talk that through with your therapist, that discomfort. It's better than resentment. Keep a resentment journal. That can be another thing that you could do. So you know, when you're walking around muttering under your breath how, you know, selfish everybody is and how self-centered and how, you know, annoying and uncaring they are, you know, it might be good to write down your thoughts, write down what they're doing and use that journaling process to figure out what your needs are. Because like I said, resentment is a sign that you're being self-sacrificing. Being self-sacrificing means you have a need that's not being fulfilled and now you're blaming someone else for that. You have to figure out what that need is. You have to brainstorm options and ways of getting that need met or supported so that you don't continue to live with resentment for the rest of your life. Some people do. It's no way to live if you ask me. And one more tip before I leave you, one more idea is to, once you know what your needs are or once you're clear that you don't want to do the thing anymore that you've been doing for a long time, that it's time to say no, that you need to set a boundary, you know, find a trusted friend or mentor or therapist and rehearse what you're going to say. Plan an assertive but respectful um, script or response. Practice it before you go in. You know, if you're going to do it by email, write the email. Don't send it straight away. You know, reread it. Make sure that it's clear but respectful. You know, it's not other people's fault if they don't know what your needs are, if you haven't let them know. So when it comes time to let them know, because now you're clear and you think, well, I know what they are now. So I need to let other people know, otherwise they won't know. You still need to be respectful. There's no point in going in aggressively into the blame stuff because then you keep yourself stuck in the cycle of not having the boundaries of being you know, resentful and then feeling bad about being resentful that's a vicious cycle. You don't want to stay in that. So rehearse what you're going to say to set that boundary in place. This is such a big topic, actually. I could go on and on, but I'm nearly at the 10 minute mark and I want to respond to any questions that you might have. Um, so I'll so feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll leave it there and um, until next time. Bye for now.